In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in, and I don't want to fit in. The Archie comics are one of the most successful, longest-running comic book series in the industry with over 2 billion comics published and translated into dozens of foreign languages. Yet despite the immense cultural influence the series and its many animated counterparts have had on the West, I don't hear non-comic buff people talk about them often. They're obviously well known enough for the CW to adapt them, or rather their characters, into a successful ongoing TV series. Hey, where to go? Oh, there it is. But my point is, I don't hear my friends talk about the latest issue of, say, Betty and Veronica, like they might talk about the latest volume of a manga series or the latest blockbuster movie. The closest my generation has come to that is laughing at Riverdale cringe compilations. So today I'd like to make up for that a little by discussing what makes the Archie comics as a whole so special and whether or not they still hold up in the modern comic book world. Archie Andrews first appeared in a series called Pep Comics back in 1941. People apparently liked him, so he got his own comic book series the next year. The story follows Archibald, a typical American teenager, as he struggles to pick between his tomboyish childhood friend Betty Cooper and the rich, alluring Veronica Lodge. The basic premise has stayed fairly consistent throughout the years, even with thousands of different artists and writers putting their own spin on it. In 1968, Archie and his friends got their own TV segment called The Archie Show, but it took on several titles and formats well into the late 70s. It combined jokes, using a laugh track with music, and one particular song featured, Sugar Sugar, made it to number one on the US Billboard charts. These were the peak years for the show as well as for the comics. But for all that fame, did the Archie comics really deliver in the comedy department? Are you ready? Sorry about that, handsome, but you shouldn't stand so close to mud puddles. Quite some of that could have splashed off you onto me. Gee, I'm sorry, Reg. I'll, I'll watch it next time. Boy, if I wasn't afraid of poisoning myself, I'd sure take a hunk out of... Come on, hot dog. The comics have always taken a standard rom-com approach with misunderstandings and teenage drama, but there's a lot you can do with likable characters and a premise that's easy to build upon. Archie is a clumsy one, Reggie is the bully, Jughead is terrified of the female population, and so on. My favorite character is Jughead Jones, whose real name, by the way, is Forsyth. I had this huge fight with some kid years and years ago who insisted Jughead's real name was Jughead, but I knew he was wrong, I was a true fan, I just didn't have proof. So anyways, back to the topic at hand, a lot of laughs come from the imperfect characters and their antics. The Archie comics and its many spin-offs feature every shade of comedy imaginable, actually. Slapstick, one-liners, irony, breaking the fourth wall. Their variety basically ensures that whichever issue you pick up, you'll be entertained. In a digest issue, the title of each comic is typically a pun, which I remember loving when I was younger. At the same time, some writers are more gifted than others, and it shows. To me, the Archie series as a whole is a ton of fun, but it's pretty hard to ignore the bad apples. And by bad apples, I don't just mean bad writing, I mean sexism and some other really bad messages for teens. Hmm, if Veronica won't go out with me anymore, I'll just start taking Betty out Fridays and Saturday night. I beg your misogynistic pardon? As I've already established, the reappearing characters in the Archie comics are not perfect human beings. They're not meant to be either, but if I had been reading these comics when I was younger than 10, I'm sure I would have seen the female characters as role models, which would be a bad thing. Betty is sweet, but she's also over-dependent on Archie to the point of letting him step all over her, and let's be honest, she's likely just infatuated with the idea of dating in general. Veronica is selfish, shamelessly manipulative of all men, not just Archie, and tends to put her own needs and fleeting desires over his despite still claiming to love him. The way women are portrayed in the Archie comics, especially in the older editions, just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Betty and Veronica from the beginning were only meant to be Archie's girls, and that itself isn't too much of a problem, this is fiction after all, but there isn't a single conventionally attractive female Archie hasn't flirted with or dated, and the way the women act around Archie, or any boy their age, is also concerning. It's almost as if the only remarkable thing about a woman is her body or her relation to a man, which, by the way, was a common belief around the time the Archie comics first started. 
The reason I'm focusing so much on the messages and themes of the series is because a large percentage of its readers are young enough to learn things from it. Now, you could say that these problems are a thing of the past, but that's the main issue, they aren't. The covers are the same, the jokes are the same. The Betty and Veronica line of comics in particular have made a bit of progress towards seeming woke, and it seems forced a lot of the times because the misogyny is still present, the over-sexualizing of teenagers is also still present. I understand that just because a fictional character says or does something offensive, it doesn't mean the creatives of that fictional character hold the same views. But don't you think we should move on from at least a few these themes? To answer the question of are the Archie comics problematic, I'm left conflicted, and I'm definitely not the only one considering the slow but steady dip in sales. The Archie series has long since reached the end of its golden age, apparent in the desperate marketing scheme that was Archie's death in 2014, and yes, in the live-action TV adaptation that completely disrespects its source material. And maybe it's for the best. I have many fond memories of these comics and I won't stop enjoying the collection I have, but even century-old franchises have to die sometime. Once it goes, we can remember the comics for being more fun than they were problematic or old-fashioned. Even if you don't agree with me on that, at least we can all agree on something. Riverdale sucks. Oh, geez, here. Here comes Jughead and Hot Dog Tooth.